could soon reach ep epidemic levels. Experts are very concerned about the strain that's spreading this year, and ABC's Gio Benitez has the latest. This morning, emergency rooms across the nation filling up. The rate of flu hospitalizations doubling in just one week, according to the CDC, in one of the worst seasons in recent history. <laughs> Sending Americans like Paula Paris to the doctor with symptoms like high fever, severe chills, and muscle aches. I felt so incredibly cold, like to my bones. The CDC says this year's dominant strain, H3N2, is known to be especially dangerous, making its victims much sicker much more quickly than other types of flu. Historically, it's been associated with um, a higher incidence, incidence of mortality, both in the elderly population and in the very young population. <laughs> Some public health officials fear this is just the beginning. California already hit especially hard with 124 deaths across San Diego and Los Angeles counties alone. In terms of where we go from here, there is a little bit of unpredictability to flu activity. And we're live now here at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York. And one of the things they're doing here for very sick patients admitted to the hospital is they might want to go ahead and do a DNA test to see what kind of flu they have. So I want to show you this. This is actually one of those DNA tests. It's a swab, a nose swab, and it gives them the result in about an hour. Michael? All right. Thank you very much for that, Gio. And for, for more, we're going to be joined by Dr. Daniel B. Jernigan. He's the director of the influenza, the influenza division at the CDC. And, Doc, thank you so much for joining us. And you say the CDC hates this strain of the fluid. Why is this so bad? And, and I guess the other question, why is there such a big surge of it right now? Yeah, there's a couple things here. At, at CDC, we monitor influenza very closely. And what we're seeing is that this year, the influenza season started earlier and it seems to be peaking right about now. And so it's about a month earlier than it normally would uh, be peaking. And so lots of cases happening in lots of states all at the same time. And so that's what I think people are feeling right now. And we're getting a lot of questions from our viewers and, and most of the questions end up at the, like this at the end. Is it true that the shot is only about 10% effective this year? And if that is true, why, why is that? Well, let me take a step back and just say that this year the cases that we're seeing, like you mentioned, are due to H3N2, which is a virus that whenever it shows up, it causes lots of disease, lots of hospitalizations, lots of cases, and lots of deaths. And we know that the influenza vaccine is the best way to prevent influenza, but in H3N2 seasons, it is not as effective as it is for the other viruses that circulate. And so the 10% is a very low estimate that came out of Australia over their season last summer. Uh, the same kind of virus that we had last year was around 30, 33% effective for the H3 component. It's actually more effective for the other parts of the uh, vaccine that are trying to prevent the other flus that are circulating. So even though it doesn't prevent the flu, it could make it a little bit um, the, it less severe if someone were to get the flu. And that, why, why is this strain? Why is there such a big surge of it right now, this year? Well, there's a lot of reasons for that. It may be that some of the weather has something to do with it. Uh, the virus was able to start circulating in time so that when folks went home for Thanksgiving or they went home for Christmas, they were able to transmit it to the folks that they're with. And because of that, it's able to circulate quickly. But we know that this particular virus uh, does cause more cases and it can be more severe. All right, Dr. Jernigan, thank you so much for that. 40% of adults will be protected with the current vaccine, right. uh, two-thirds of children, but uh, the over 65s will get sort of a lot less protection because their immune systems you know, are, are weaker as well. So what are the symptoms then? If, you, if you've got this, how do you know if you've got it? Well, the, the sort of classic symptoms are, are we coming up with them on the screen? Okay. There yeah, there you are. I mean, a sore throat and cough, right, headache, fever, muscle aches and fatigue. But let me just go through that. The, the, the fever comes on quickly, it's quite high, aches and pains all over. Your arms and legs are aching, the headaches aching, your sore throat. You feel exhausted and you feel dreadful. And people say, well, what's the difference between cold and a flu? Well, think of cold as a head cold. It's only a head, runny nose, sneezing, oh. sore throat, and that's gone in a couple of days. Flu will drag on for about a week, 10 days, maybe even longer, and can leave you very exhausted mm. afterwards, post-viral fatigue. So mm. certainly get vaccinated. The over 65 should be children, pregnancy, uh, and also people with lifelong, lifelong conditions such as heart disease, kidney disease, liver disease, diabetes, they're the ones.